just, let's just do a quick review. Can we do that? Can we do a review? It's always fun to review. You know, it's, no, it's good to know where we've come from. Okay, it's wonderful to know who we are, but sometimes it's great to have a reminder to see where we've come from. Amen? Okay. So let's put the first set of scriptures up. And, and you know, we're going gonna, gonna, we're gonna to read them together. And it's in Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> verses 1 through 31. I'm going to read them. I'm going to read it pretty fast, okay? But there's a reason. I want you to see if you catch something here. Look out. Look in the words that we're going to say together, okay? Because there's a specific word that's used over and over and over again. And I know you're smart. Let's see if you catch it, okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Amen? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Lord God, the Spirit of God, moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the, in, in the evening, and in the evening, and in the morning was the first day. So day number one, he created, come on, correct. And then God says, in verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the, ev and the evening and the morning were the second day. So the second day he created the heavens. He, come on, he said. You getting it? Verse 10, and God called the dry land earth, and, and gathering together of the waters called he the seas, and God saw that it was, say it together with me, good. Verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. No shadow of turning in God. Amen. He said it, and it came to pass. Amen. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So the third day he spoke and created. Correct. Verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven and divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Sets up our system today. Amen. Some of us are 29 years. Some of us are 30 years. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven and to, to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good, and this was the fourth day. Amen? And God said, boy, I mean, he's catching it already. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life and the fowl that may fly above the earth in open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature and moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters, fill the seas. Let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning was the fifth day. Verse 24. And God said, said let the earth bring forth a living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, beasts of the earth and after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make 
man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish in the sea, over the fowl of, of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that liveth upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And he blessed them and told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish and over the sea and over the fowl of the air and every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the earth of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me, and every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and every thing that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now let's go to chapter 2 of Genesis. Verse 7. I want you to notice something here. In the previous verses we just read, he spoke things into existence. And he said, let's make man in our image. I believe at that time he was speaking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He's having a conversation with them. Oh, let's make God in our, in our, let's make man in our image. Because in chapter 2, verse 7, let's see. It says this. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. He didn't speak man into existence. He took the time because of his love and affection toward his creation, his soul creation. See, everything else was to support his soul creation. Man. And he took the time and he took the dust and he formed the dust. Step number one. Step number two, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Whose life? Whose life? He breathed into man his life. God's life. Everything else he spoke, and it was so. But man, he formed and then breathe God's life in man. You catch that? Let me tell you, you got, whoo, get excited. If you catch that, it'll excite you. He breathed his life into man. See, we don't have any idea what the time span was, and it really isn't, doesn't matter much between man being created and then the fall of man. Now let me ask you a question. How did Adam have any idea how to name those animals? See, I believe at that point, man was created in the image of God and God breathed his life. You see the diagrams, okay? And the diagrams say, the little sphere is the spirit. The next sphere is the soul. And the larger sphere sphere is the body. Not so when God created us. When God created us and breathed his life into us, the little sphere was the body. The next sphere was the soul because man was ruled by the life of God. Then a choice came. We all know the story. And if you read Dr. Billy's book, you'll find out it wasn't a fruit. But the enemy came and said, has God really said? Now let's look at it. Let's look at it. I believe it's in um, chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. Let's look at it together. Now the serpent was, none, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. 
That's his modus operandi. Get you off the subject. Did God really say? And she said, what? He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Did God really tell you you couldn't eat of every tree of the garden? Did he really say that? The question was brought forth. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So they knew. So there blows another theory that we've been taught in religion, that the devil made us do it. The devil didn't make us do it. He made a suggestion and we gave it up. And we still do today. We give it up. And then we think we're on an all-out fight against the enemy, and we're not. We're not. I was just sharing with Pastor earlier this morning. My wife and I were in the pool yesterday, and I said, you know, it just amazes me how people want to just, you know, bind the devil, loose this, do this. Jesus has accomplished it, it all of it. And yet he'll come occasionally and say, did God really say? Did God really mean what he said? A choice. Remember that word choice. And the serpent said, He shall really die. Come on, are you kidding me? Are you serious? For God doth know that in the day ye eat, therefore your eyes will be surely open. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. A choice was given. A choice was made. Remember the word choice. So in the beginning was God. Amen? And God created mankind. See God? See the representation of mankind? They look an awful lot alike, don't they? They are. Because he breathed his life into man and made him like him. Then man made a choice and disobeyed. So sin came. And sin entered by choice man, which created separation from God and man. Amen? But you know, Jesus came. Jesus came. The Garden of Gethsemane, the enemy came to him and said, Come on, I'll give you this. He said, No. Not my will, but the will, the will of the Father. Get behind me. At Gethsemane, he bled sweats of blood. 100% humanity. 100% deity. And he said, Father, if you can take this cup from me, it would be wonderful. I would love it. Why? He never knew separation from his father. He never knew separation from his father. But he understood what he needed to do. And he said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I'm going to give myself, and I'm going to give myself to man, and I'm going to take their sin." And not only that, I'm going to take the sin of the world and I'm going to place it upon myself. And I'm going to take it all. Sin's done with. Sin's done with. Past, present, and future. He's redeemed us back to himself. Somebody shout. I had a simple little chemistry thing, but boy, let me tell you, it brings it to point. It did for me when I did it. I was like, man, I always said, yeah, my sin's gone, my sin's gone, my sin's gone. My sin's gone. Past, present, future, whatever I think I could do, it's gone because of what Jesus did. 
Jesus redeemed you and me, mankind, and brought us back into the position where he originally created us. Sin is gone. That's the first stage of Christianity right there. You keep a hold of this, the next step is going to be easy. The next step is going to be so simple. But you know, sometimes we just get caught up in choices. Let me give you some examples. Salvation. How many got it? How many have salvation? Sin is no more. It's gone. Now I get to walk into the freedom and liberty that God has given me. Amen? But that's, uh, say choice. It's a choice. Geez, you know, a while ago, pastor taught about Martha and Mary. You know, and I was looking through some of the, some of the instances in the Bible. It just amazes me the choices that some people made. You know, now, Mary, we know the story of Mary and Martha. Come on now. Lazarus had died, their brother. It was a big to-do. Now, if you would, please, would you put up the first PowerPoint that I have, and it's choices. Take your time. Ah, can you see that? Choices? Can you see it up on the big one? Okay. Pay attention. You see how the first letter of every word is darkened for a reason. Follow me. Mary, Jesus, you finally made it. My son, my, my, bro, my, son, my brother, my brother, he's gone. Martha, all betwixt and, and just a set aside of herself. Because Martha was the doer. She was just doing and doing and doing and doing and doing. And what did she see in the midst of her doing? In the midst of her doing, the choices she made, she chose to see Jesus' as humanity. And she reached out to Jesus' as humanity. And she said, would you have a talk with my sister? She didn't read Pastor Billy's Jesus Revolution book. One or two. Come on, now, you know, Jesus, what's wrong with you? Talk to Mary. And he looked at her. But yet Mary was sitting at his feet. Why? Because she chose to see his deity. She chose. She chose. She chose to see her deity. She recognized that Jesus at the tomb spoke simple words that said, Lazarus, come forth. And there was Lazarus. And then instructed them to take off his burial clothes. And you know what? When they took off his burial clothes, he had baby-like skin, from a rotting corpse to a live, breathing being. Jesus simply spoke, and that's what Mary saw, the deity of Christ. Martha, on the other hand, didn't see the deity of Christ. She saw her, him through her choices of work and toil. Choice. How about, how about the disciples? There were very, several times when Jesus would say, get in the boat. you got to love Jesus. He had a sense of humor. They all get in the boat and there's a storm arising and Jesus is falling asleep. And everybody's like, Jesus! There's a storm. 75 mile an hour gale winds. The water's overflowing the boat. And Jesus wakes up, and what does he do? They saw Jesus. They chose to see Jesus in his humanity. Jesus, we're scared. Fear. They chose fear. And Jesus stood up and rose, and he said, be still. How could you not be amazed? 
Yet they did it time and time again. They just, in one instance, they just, just were delivered, got to the other side, and then there was a demonic being, and there they go again, choosing fear. Do we choose fear sometimes? Do we choose fear? Do we cho choose, in, you know, intimidation? Do we choose separation? Do we choose, well, let's see what Google has to say. Oh, okay. Cool. Hey, let's see what, you know, oh, yeah, let's see what hashtag says. Oh, yeah. Or do we say, let's see what the word has to say. Give me my next slide, please. You know our choices? They create habits. My chain doesn't want to go together. I got it. Sometimes we make choices. They create habits. Habits that we just automatically fall into because of our choices. Let me have my next slide. You know, and then once we create a habit, it becomes automatic. The choices we sometimes make out of fear, despair, desperation, they become habit and they become automatic. Let me have the next slide. Once they become automatic, not only do we identify with them, we agree with it. We identify with what we've chosen the choices we've made, and we identify with them because we've made a habit, and it's become automatic, and we identify with what we've made, a chain. Let me have the last one. And then before you know it, our choices which become habits that automatically come and we identify with, they become our nature, what we automatically do. Hey, Bob, come here, buddy. This is an example. I want you to hold this. These are the choices that you've made, okay? And those choices have created a habit. That habit has become automatic to you, and you've identified with that, and you, it's just your nature. You don't let go of this for all the rice in China. Okay? okay? So now God tells you something. God speaks to you. And you look at it. And then, go ahead, try to walk away. Your chains hold you right where you are. Your decisions, your choices. Try and walk away. You're done. You're not going anywhere. I'm bigger than you. I love you. God's got great things for you. You ain't going nowhere. Say something, uh, another situation comes, and then you try. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You ain't getting away. Our choices that create habits that have come automatically, that we identify with, become nature, and they hold us. But yet, you just let go of this chain. Jesus said, I've broken all your chains. I've taken all your chains. I've taken all your fear. I've taken death. It's gone. Now, my new choices. I'm going to say very boldly that I am glad and grateful that I'm chained to grace because I choose to make a habit and to identify with what Jesus has done for me. So when those choices come, and, and they'll come, you go ahead and walk, brother. You go ahead. I'm with Jesus, and I'm saying, he's made me more than a conqueror. Walk this way. I don't care. I know what Jesus has done for me. I am what he says I am. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. I'm chained to the most living God, because my thoughts are his thoughts. You're catching on, buddy. He'll never let you go. He'll never hold you back. He's always with you. That's why he says to put on the... No, put on the... Put on the mind of God. 
I focus on what Jesus has done. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what the circumstances is. Jesus said that he, with, with what Jesus did, when, can you understand that when Jesus said tetelestai, do you realize that the moment he said it was finished, all of heaven poured itself open and every blessing that God has is yours and mine. And not only is this boy a son, you're a son. Not only is you a son, you're a daughter. Not only are you a daughter, don't let go of that thing. Not, not only are you a son or a daughter, you're an heir. You're an heir. I'm chained to the word. I'm chained to the living God. That's who I identify. You see, because that's my choice. And with that choice, it'll create a habit. That's who I identify with. And then my nature falls aside and I have the God-like nature. I am who you said I am. That's why we sing that song. I am more than a conqueror. I am blessed, not because of anything I could do, but because I am chained through the love of Father God through Jesus Christ and what he's done for me. Grace and grace alone. So I encourage you today. Thank you, Bob. I encourage you today. What choices do you want to make? Because they will create a habit. They will become automatic. You will identify and they will become your nature. That's what pastor's doing. He's teaching us to identify with the risen Lord. He's teaching us to identify with who we are and what Christ has done for us. Why? So that it makes him feel good? Absolutely not. You know what makes him feel good? Sharing with me, teaching me, and seeing me up here. Sharing with you, teaching you, and seeing you live the conquered life. Not, the con not being the conquered, but the victor. That's, that's the simplicity of it, church. That is the simplicity of it. This isn't pie in the sky. This isn't like you gotta, you got to get up every morning and thank God and, and speak it over yourself. You have it because you're an heir of the kingdom because of Jesus. It's right there. You go back and look at the, all the blessings of Abraham. Every one of those are yours. Every one of those are yours. Every one of those are yours by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Every one. So if you're going to chain yourself, chain yourself to the living God. Amen? Amen. Give God a hand clap. Pastor. Well, thank you, Andrew.